Uh, mainly what I've done the last few years is uh, take 50 caliber musket balls and I stamp it out on an anvil into a coin. And then I take the coins and I have the die. I have a maple leaf and, a, and an acorn. I don't know if you can see those. And I stamp those and on the back side of the to leaf. And I put the, the year on there, so it's the 12 this year. This last year I'm going to be making the coins. Wow. So I've, 1861, Kansas is 150 years old, 150th year of the Civil War, so I'm also going a little short trivia history of what happens in Kansas the next five years. Stuff that won't show up in the regular history books. Uh, this year I'm kind of emphasizing the Genesis Jayhawkers, 7th Kansas Volunteer Cavalry. They were the real bad guys, the Union Army. Nobody liked them. They didn't like anybody. Uh, their leaders were abolitionists, real ardent abolitionists. And some of the men that worked that were with them just liked to plunder and kill. And uh, they were about two years ahead of Sherman. And, uh, burning and, and, and laying, waste, you know, laying waste at the countryside. Their idea of going into the area you know, had southern sympathies and some that had northern. So you burn the houses, you steal the, 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 the cattle, you destroy the crops, you, you steal the furniture. And if somebody uh, looked at you wrong or tried to stop you, you shot them. And, uh, it was the shooting people that really made folks mad. But around 1862, at the end of the year, uh, the Union Army finally decided, well, maybe that's one way to get this war to end a little fast. And, and Sherman finally decided that's the way to go. So that's what he did in, in uh, Alabama, wow. in Georgia. So was that the Union's answer to Quantrill? No, Quantrill. <laughs> what happened when the war started was it gave them folks in, in western Missouri and eastern Kansas a chance to continue the, the border wars that started in 1855. So you had, in Missouri you had the bushwhackers and they'd come in and raid Kansas and the, and the Jayhawkers would go in and raid Missouri. And Quantrill was basically a bushwhacker. Uh, Missouri also had guerrillas which were more partisan who, who who f were forced by, a lot of them were forced by the Jayhawkers into, into fight. A lot of them were old former Union men who had their farms burned. Uh, the Bushwhackers were people who were farmers during the daytime and then go out and shoot Union people at night. Uh, a lot of the guerrillas were more organized. They, that's what they did when they fought. They attacked the Union outposts and, railroads and stuff, they, they're more uh, part of the war effort. The bushwhackers uh, just hated Kansas, and uh, the Jayhawkers started out that way. So all that stuff was pre-Civil War, basically? Well, it started, a lot of it pre began before the war started, it discontinued. Uh, uh, when, uh, the Seventh Cavalry, uh, the Army thought they could control them by, by making them part of the, the army, and it didn't really work, so they finally ended up just getting them out of Kansas and put them into uh, Kentucky and Tennessee and, and northern Mississippi, where they actually get, did some good fighting, they actually. And they, uh, John Brown Jr. actually uh, formed and led one of the, one of the companies. Uh, he left his, uh, one with his father at the Har raid at Harper's Ferry, but he, was, he went to uh, Illinois and uh, the abolitionists in the Seventh Cavalry uh, were more for freeing slaves and less for destroying property and, and killing people. So, but there was a mix of both that were in the unit. It was unit. a mix of both in the unit. Some of the companies were just made, made up of men and officers that liked to kill people and steal and stuff like that. And, uh, as the war went on, other other Union regiments decided they wanted to do that. Wow. In fact, the uh, the uh, 
set of regiments. Reputation preceded them into Tennessee. And uh, when they got there, they found out that they were being blamed for stuff that had happened by uh, other regiments even before they got there. Oh. So, but they did enough things that they <laughs> got blamed for they shouldn't have. Wow. But uh, it was, uh, anyway, that's a uh, good reason why some folks in Missouri still don't like Kansas with the words off. That's right. Well, what are some, what's one of the main things you want the scouts to learn here about the Civil War and kind of take away from what well, you're sharing? Mainly, I want to let them know that it's history, and they should, they should, uh, they should remember history. Don't forget it. Uh, it was a time of. Uh, I don't really get to talk, you know, talk to the boys too much about it, about how you know, when it started the war, everybody thought it'd be a great adventure, and it didn't get to be. What I do show, I have a 58 caliber mini ball here. That uh, was a standard issue. Left. And this thing had a hollow base, so the gas and the burning uh, powder would collect in there and push the ball out faster. And then it would spin, and when it would hit somebody at 300 yards, it would still have enough power to flatten. And uh, that's a mini ball. This is a mini ball. Is that then? That was the high technology that, that was led the high to such technology. a lethal battlefield, and right? If that hit bone, it would just shatter. It was. It would. It would. You could kill a man at five, eight hundred yards if you were good enough. And so the surgeons didn't know how to treat a shattered limb. And so they end up cutting off arms and legs. And that's one one of the reasons they were called sawbones. That was one of the nicest things they were called that. The surgeons just uh, medical treatment was a pretty rough back then. And uh, it was a far cry from the adventure that they thought it was going to be. Oh, it was a real beginning. far cry. The first battle, uh, a lot of people decided that was it. They didn't need it. Uh, a lot of the men who fought in the first battles of, uh, of uh, the first bull run or first battle of Manassas, or Wilson's Creek down in uh, southwest Missouri, they were 90-day men. They'd only signed up to serve 90 days, and a lot of them, by the time the battle started, they were almost, uh, their time was up. In fact, uh, uh, they had problems keeping them, uh, keeping them in the army. The only way they were keep them in the army after their 90-day enlistment was up was to promise them they'd get into a fight. So they got into their fight, and a number of them, after the, like at Wilson's Creek, some of the folks in Second Kansas, when they mustered out, they, they didn't go back in. They'd had enough. They found that war was no, uh, no glory. Uh, people wanted to be officers because there was a lot of glory in there. And then they found out after a while, by 1863, they'd, uh, the, especially the, the junior officers, were able to do the math. And if you go into a battle and you lose 15% of your enlisted men, you can learn, lose 60% of your officers. So they decided that going home was better than a glorious death. So they'd start uh, changing their uniforms legally. They, they, they get rid of their their off regulation uniforms. They start dressing more like enlisted men, so they wouldn't be such conspicuous targets. Wow! They stop wearing their sabers, and they'd take their their insignia off their caps. They take their shoulder boards off. They'd start wearing a, a short uh, enlisted uh, sack coat. So cause you, the one thing you didn't want to do was, was to look like an officer when you're out there charging. Wow. Some of them would start carrying rifles in the, in the, in the battle. Because it, it lasted a lot longer then. And in fact, it got so bad that in eight, uh, November of 1864, the Army changed regulations and said, OK, you guys can, as long as we can still tell you're an officer somehow, wear what you want. Wow. I mean, they had, generals, they let, let do funny things, and like Custer would wear weird things, and there were, there were some Union generals and Southern generals who wore weird shirts. It was kind of dumb, but they, some of them actually lived. 